Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Niccolo showcases application he discovered about like three weeks ago. In this case, it is uh, about Ghostwriter. So what is Ghostwriter? I actually didn't know up until three weeks ago because this application has joined Kedi just around uh, the time of Academy, uh, maybe a few days before that. So when it did, I tried it out and I thought it was a pretty good application. Now, before we get actually into Ghostwriter, I want to uh, show just how Preter Discover is getting. You do get the header with all the information about the application, but you do also get the website card, a way to share the application, the reviews, and then a way to donate and report a bug plus the permissions of this application. I think that whole of this whole view is just so pretty. You can also donate to this application and likely this link is, as you can see now, not pointing directly to the donate page because that has changed when they moved to uh, KD. However, they do have a contribute page that tells you very precisely if you want to change the application, improve it, how to actually do that and going into great details. So that's very nice. You can also contribute through testing, translation and such. And then you have a way to donate directly to KDE as a whole. But enough said, let's actually try out the application. So it is, as you might have understood, a uh, uh, markdown editor, which is something particularly useful to me, especially because lately I have writing a lot of mathematic uh, math notes as uh, .md files. And the interface out of the box, uh, there are a couple of things I want to say. Firstly, it doesn't quite feel, feel currently like it is a KDE application. This is because it is a QML application, so it uses Qt, the same toolkit of all other KDE apps. However, it does not use Kurigami, which is a toolkit to build apps done by KDE, which builds on top of QML Qt Quick. So this is using QML, but it's its own QML. And it makes sense as it was not born as a KDE application, but has recently joined uh, KDE. So something that I would hope for the future is for this application to actually want to, with time, adopt the style and the visual guidelines of KDE. That's something that I would hope to see. Of course, it's not st strictly necessary. Now, with this application joining the KDE, and remember, if you do have a KDE, uh, an application and you want to join KDE, you can. There's a process that, that this app is going through, which is the incubator, which is making sure that this application has all the things it needs to be a KDE application. And being a KDE application, joining KDE actually gives you some nice benefits. As an example, you do get a GitLab, uh, the KDE's GitLab instance, you get a lot of contributors interested in the project, you get a lot of um, advertisement from KDE promotional channels about your application, you also get you know, all the infrastructure around our applications, so the ability to have a website uh, inside of KDE.org, like they do. These kind of things, these kind of things can actually help your application grow. So if you have an application and you want to join KDE, do that, why not? <laughs> so I've talked about <laughs> everything except how it actually works. So this is the light theme, by default you'll get the dark one. However, my notes are better, better viewed in light theme. My notes do have some HTML, but this is actually displayed correctly. You can see these cards are actually defi defined in CSS and it works nicely. This is actually an HTML viewer. So if you embed some HTML, it will still be shown correctly, which is super nice. You have a live view of what you're writing here, which is also very nice. And of course you get syntax highlighting. Finally, you get here on the left, the document structure. And this is particularly important because although you can get syntax highlighting for markdown files in Kit as well, and still in Kit, you can also get a preview of the markdown file. This is what really distinguishes this application. Plus another couple uh, nice features. Firstly, we have Hemingway mode, which does not allow you to delete anything. You, you can see I'm trying to hit backspace, I cannot delete. This is something that Hemingway's, Hemingway things will help you write, okay, I guess. And then you also get something that's very nice, which is the focus mode. That is, it only highlights the sentence that you're currently selecting with your cursor. I actually find this pretty 
easier uh, on your eyes when you're actually writing. You do want to focus on what you're writing right now rather than having the whole document overwhelm you. So I'm going to keep that enable. What else? You got a good variety of things about what you're writing. As an example, I have not written any word currently, but if I go here and start writing, see, I've written seven words. This is my average words per minute. So it's a nice bunch of statistics about my writing speed, which is particularly useful. But I also get the typical statistics about how many words I am writing. And something also very useful is if I want to check whether um, I'm writing, you know, too much and going into uh, too much depth about a topic and can just select some paragraphs like this. And it will tell me that I'm, I've am i used 400 words to explain this topic, which is a fair amount. So I don't have to worry about that. It also tells me, uh, but in this case, I think that it only works in English, but I'm not sure. Maybe it does work in Italian as well. I have no idea. The reading is and the grade level of my document. Now, 11th grade, I actually had to Google how, how old people are, are in the 11th grade. I had to check. I actually wanted to keep this document rather simple. So 11th grade apparently is like 16 years old. That's fine. That's what my document is uh, meant for. So fine. And then reading is, it can tell you whether it's easier or harder. So apparently this, whoa, this particular part as an example, it's rocket science. <laughs> Again, no idea of whether it actually supports Italian. I hope not. I hope this sentence is not actually rocket science. <laughs> I'm actually checking how it works. Okay, so the algorithm that's called uh, Coleman Liao is actually, um, that is not based on the language but based on like number of words uh, in a sentence, number of letters in a word. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. I guess this is rocket science then. What else? Well, you might notice that everything here is using co Comic Sans. <laughs> yes, this font is Comic Sans. That's not what you get out of the box. However, you're able to customize that with the font part. And of course, I put Comic Sans for me because, you know, that's the only font that you're actually able to write mathematics book in. You might not uh, know about that, but now you know. You can only write books about mathematics in Comic Sans. You also get the ability to switch between themes and to create new themes just like that, just by selecting what colors everything should be, just like that. Boom, done. All themes will work both in light and dark mode, which is pretty nice. And of course, you can get rid of them as well. Boom, gone. What else, you know, the type of those things, like as an example, you can change the font of the preview as well. Um, it's not working for me, but that's because I have a CSS uh, style that tells, uh, that overrides the text font. It will work for you. And, you know, the syntax highlighting is correct. The application is rather simple. There's not much I haven't showed. There's also here um, cheat sheet if you don't know um, Markdown that will, uh, that will, so you can just look here. And that's it really. It's a nice application that has just joined KDE and I hope they will be able to grow uh, underneath the umbrella of KDE applications. And thanks to them so for actually joining in. If you like this application, remember that you can contribute to it and also donate to KDE as a whole. So thanks everybody for tuning in and see you tomorrow with another video.